Slovenia's EMA 2017 has come to an end, and Eurovision 2005 star Omar Nabir has won. Shall we talk about it? guys ahead of tonight's final a lot of people did not have this on their radar people were talking about b cool or as we say bql and raven and nika but people were not mentioning omar nabir who competed in 2005 but he like a stealth bomb came out of nowhere and blew it up he definitely had the best voice of the evening regardless of whether you like the song or not he delivered vocally. I thought the other acts, particularly Be Cool, who I was watching quite closely, just weren't as on. Whereas he nailed it, particularly in his recap. He was so loose and happy and free. The song is not my cup of tea. I, you know, if I, if I want musical theater, I don't go to Eurovision. I go to the West End. <laughs> I go see Legally Blonde. You know, I go on YouTube and watch Hairspray. I don't want it in EMA 2017. But you know what? He can sing and he sold it to the Slovenians. So perhaps there's something here. Kristen. Well, yeah. There's definitely something there, but you know, maybe you're not asking the right person because I couldn't hate on Omar Nabir like ever. I mean, he could go on stage and burp the Slovenian national anthem dressed in a toilet seat, and I would still be like, yes. That rolls but off he the delivered. Tongue. What? Uh, oh, the song was fine. <laughs> no, actually, um, his former, you know, uh, uh, when he was performing the first time, I thought it lacked power, but you know, like you said, vocally, he was on point. He was the best vocalist of the night, hands on. But then in the encore, when he, he had won, there was so much power in the song, a power that wasn't there before. And I was like, damn, you know, keep that going and you're going places. He's going to the final if he keeps it, you know, as powerful as he did in his, you know, encore performance. Yeah, it's quite an old fashioned kind of ballad. And I, I don't like that kind of music, but I think a lot of people will like it. And I know it's a very ballad-heavy year this year, but I think he's he's offering something quite unique. I mean, for a start, he's a male singer, but he is a very uh, confident and very powerful singer, and I think he can deliver a lot. I was looking at the Wee Wee Jury results, and we actually rated him bottom equal with um, Tim Corey's. And it's kind of interesting because um, I think Tim had bad vocals in a good song, whereas the general response was that Omar had brilliant vocals and it not, his song wasn't as great. And I saw a comment, I think it was on Twitter, someone saying, what if you paired Omar with Tim's song? It would have been this probably quite a big pop performance. But what we actually saw at the national final is he did actually bring a lot more to the, um, to the performance. So what was perhaps a little flat in the semi-final suddenly it, it it came to life a bit more and I can see it working and if things go well I can see him finally getting to the Eurovision final yeah he's gonna need some good staging I think the staging in Slovenia was a little flat it felt a little empty and yes he's got the big voice to fill the stage but at Eurovision you're gonna have an even bigger stage and you're gonna have to fill it not just with your voice but with also with some visuals it was just bland to me visually. There were some lights and there was a stage and there was a man singing really nicely. You know, if we draw a comparison to Junior Eurovision, you know, there were a lot of ballads, but Maryam Mamadashvili, she brought a Broadway number and she won. So maybe you're right. There are a lot of ballads this year, but A, he has a penis and B, his ballad isn't the modern screaming diva ballad. It is a dude on the stage slaying a story. He's on his way to <laughs> Kiev. The one thing I remember about his staging is it started in black and white and then went to colour for the chorus. And that would it would flip back and forth. So it wasn't sort of like the beginning and the end. It would be verses were in black and white, the chorus was in colour. And I think that actually had a negative effect because it made the verses seem really boring. 
And then when the chorus came along, I don't think it gave it the kick that they were really intending. The the entertainment value all came from him and his his presence and his showmanship. So I really hope they ditch that for for Kiev because I don't think that it would it does any favors for the song. And it did worry me actually because during his first performance there was one vocal warble and it just happened to be in the recap clip and so when that came on i was like oh how unfortunate but once the jury started voting clearly they had they looked over that because he killed it with the jury it was just omar after omar but kristen who else impressed you be cool they were second yeah they, like i said in the vivid jury i mean they're sweet guys but vocally they were they were really shaky and the song for me was a wee bit repetitive. It was always the same thing over and over and over again. But they were charming, and I can, I understand why they came in second. And they, of course, won the televote, Robin. Yeah, they they were one of my favorites, and I was sort of thinking they might win. But um, yeah, they the same. I have the same criticism. This song was quite repetitive, and they sort of they, was, they brought more to it with different singers and different layers. Um, and then there was. There was also the issue of, we've seen this in other national finals, where you have two men singing a love song, and it's not clear if they're singing to each other or if one of them's singing to the girl and the other one's his bro backing <laughs> him up or whether they're both singing it to the same girl and there's a weird love triangle going on. But they're brothers, so it was that was a bit like, oh, oh. I'm not sure what's going on there. They're brothers. Oh, this puts a whole new spin so. on it. Because at one point they were standing butt cheek to butt cheek. The dude got up from the piano and stood against the other dude. And I was like, I ain't never seen this move. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and they're like gazing into each other's eyes at one point. It just, it, it felt like the song was really written for one person. And they just sort of awkwardly made it fit for two people. And it, mm, it wasn't quite working. And in third place overall was Raven, ahead of the contest when I had just heard the 30-second snippets. She was my favorite by far. I thought this was going to be an Aminana Sabadogo-style song, but I was a little underwhelmed. I think um, it was just a tad boring, and I'm not sure that vocally she held it this evening. I, I remember lots of close-up shots of her teeth, and I was just looking to see if any food was stuck because I wasn't really feeling the song. I liked the light show and how she stood there and... All those lights kind of zapped her near her uterus, like the power of life, either shooting in or shooting out. I can't remember. But yeah, this in terms of the 30 second snippet to now, this was disappointing for me. I was bored the whole time. I, I wasn't feeling it. Sorry. Yeah, same. I can't even think how that song went. And a lot of them I have sort of still now stuck in my head, whereas that one, I'm just, all I can remember is her pink hair. But then I'm thinking, is it that? girl with the pink hair or was it the other girl with the pink hair so we should probably mention the jury runner up that was flower in the snow from nushka this was from another era great voice i thought vocally she was very sound she had norma john's blackbird on her ear she clearly supports finland but the song just let her down it wasn't eurovision ready friendly it was bland even with all that power um it reminded me of gina from hungary um, which was just a really pleasant song sung by a really pleasant sort of older lady singer. Um, and I can see why that sort of thing appeals to juries, but um, you want a song that's going to appeal to everyone, not just um, jury bait. Um, although you could say that Omar was also a jury favourite, but um, I think he'll have broader appeal for the general Eurovision audience as well. Especially the fan, because he is... I mean, people know him. He's not just an obscure face, you know, that uh, the surfaces during the national finals and then nothing after that. People yeah. know who he is. And he's given it a few attempts in the national selection. He's wanted to come back for many years and he's finally done it. And we always applaud those who get up, dust themselves off and come back. Omar, you slay. I was kind of <laughs> disappointed about how Salot was not hitting it off with the juries. I was like, guys, come on. That was like the most fun song of the Slovenian. Yeah, yeah it the was Scar really song. I said it, I said it. The Ska song. Mm -hmm. Look, I applaud yeah, them for yeah. doing the mannequin challenge. 
but beyond that needs to go <laughs> needs to grow this reminds me of the <laughs> mighty mighty boss tones from the late 90s <laughs> if anyone else were the same age this is just old and dated and they didn't bring a new twist on there was no new twist no new spin and so it just felt watered down to me um if so- it ain't broken why fix it Well, that's what we think and what she thinks. But what do you think? You can let us know here on Wee Wee Blogs. Make sure to subscribe. And give us a like. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.